Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So this video is going to be my review of Nicki Minaj's Queen album, which has been highly, 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 highly requested. It came out last Friday, so it's been uh, a week. You guys know I like to take my time with my reviews. A week turnaround for me is actually very fast. It took me like, what, two, three weeks to get that J. Cole uh, review out? Um, but you guys have been like really, really, really requesting it. So I've just been really, really listening to it and getting my thoughts together about how I feel about it. Um, as you guys know, but for anybody that's new, I want to say I do not watch other reviews or read other reviews or read anything or look at anything uh, before I film my review videos. I just listen to the album. So if you guys do feel like there is any, um, background information or anything like that that you feel like is pertinent, please feel free to drop it in the comments. So this, you guys know I normally like to do my reviews track by, my music reviews track by track, but I'm actually going to do this good, the bad, and the ugly format meets track by track. So we're going to start with the good, we're going to work our way down to the bad and the ugly. So let's go ahead and jump right into the good. Uh, the first track that I want to start with that I thought was good was Barbie Barbie Dreams. This is a track that everybody is talking about. It is um, a play on Biggie's song Dreams, which is Dreams of Fucking with. Uh, I'm sorry to sing Nicki's part, Nicki's version, which is about him fucking R&B chicks, and he's like name dropping all these like famous R&B chicks and like coming up with these like really. Um, intricate scenarios. Uh, Nikki did a cover of this song in 2007, I believe. 50 Cent did his own interpretation of this song. Uh, I think it was called like 50 Ways to Rob. A lot of people have done various um, interpretations of this song. Everyone is talking about this song because Nikki name dropped basically everybody in this song. She name dropped Drake. She name dropped Meat Mill. Um, Eminem, uh, Young Thug, uh, like she name dropped everybody in this song, like everybody she knows got name dropped in this song. Um, she says in the beginning of the song, R.I.P. to Biggie, like R.I.P. to B.I.G. A lot of people still obviously did not catch on to the fact that this was a flip of Biggie's dreams. Um, y'all, and y'all love drama, so you missed the whole point, of course. You saw people talk about why is she taking shots at Drake and why is she taking shots at this person, that person? Why is she dissing people? Um, I did see that just because that shit was fucking everywhere. And I did see, and I follow Nikki on fucking Instagram, and I did see that she had like put a post up, a screenshot of her Twitter where she had put like, no, this is just like a fun song. Like everybody mentioned are people that I know and people that I'm cool with that I know they could like take a joke. Like it's just fun. Like it was just fun. Like it was just a fun little New York riff, you know, song. I thought that shit was fucking hilarious and witty. And I feel like Nicki has always been able to stand toe to toe with the men. And I feel like she's still doing it. And Nicki has always been able to also stand toe to toe with rap, rap greats like Kanye, you know, Pete Kanye in his prime monster era, Jay-Z. And she's still doing it. Um... And I thought it was also, also, excuse me, a really, really kind of fun, witty, again, way of addressing rumors. Because she's, in a lot of the uh, scenarios that she talks about, she's addressing, like, various rumors from, like, various people that, you know, people have claimed she's been involved with and dated and stuff like that. But it's just, like, very tongue-in-cheek, very jokey, very witty, very ha-ha. Um, it's not, like, my personal favorite song. I'm not a huge B.I.G. fan like that. Um, you guys also know I'm not super into like old anything that sounds like old school right now, but like I get what the song means. Kind of like what I even said in like my Chun Li video when I was like, you know, the the concept of it, the point of it as a metaphor is going over people's heads, which I'm also gonna address a little bit later in this um in this video. But I, you know, I thought it was cute, you know, and then towards the end, there's a beat switch and I like that beat switch more than the whole Barbie dreams. And then she fucking tagged in Roman. I was like, ah, Roman, who we haven't heard in a while. Like, cause Roman has that little, that I say, fuck up, fuck up. And I fuck up like her Roman flow, which we haven't heard in forever, which I loved fucking hearing. Cause like when Roman comes out is when Nikki like really, 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 really starts snapping. Like, you know, like. So it was nice hearing that, like, 
Barbie Dreams is like a standout track. Everybody's talking about it. It's a good track. The day that Queen came out, so many people were sending me fucking links to Barbie Dreams. That was the first song off the track that I heard. Somebody DM me on Instagram and I literally wrote back. I was like, I just raised my eyebrows for four straight minutes. Like she snapped, like she was snapping. Um, I also really liked Thought I Knew You. I liked that one a lot. I felt like it knocked. I hate The Weeknd, but there's just like a little bit of knock to the song. Like there's something really, really special about that song. I also really, really love the hook of like, I thought I knew you. Like, turns out I didn't. Um, it's personal, it's introspective. There are some other personal introspective songs on here that I like a lot. And I think that song is about Meek Mill. It is also not the only song that I think is about Meek. And I love when Nicki does this pop R&B thing. I know there's people that do not like that. I like it, I think she does it very well. I think it is a huge part of her lane uh, that she has pretty much created for herself in this kind of space and this niche that she has carved out for herself. And I liked hearing the I like hearing these type of songs. So I did like Thought I Knew You, uh, Run and Hide. I also really really liked another good one. I feel like Nicki really understands the difference between, you know, like recreation and inspiration. A, a lot of people, most people do not understand the difference. Nikki understands the difference, in my opinion, between I'm listen to, listening to this, I like this, I like the feeling that it's giving me, I'm gonna make something inspired by this, I'm not gonna just redo the whole shit. You get what I'm saying? And it's also interesting because in rap, there's also a historical precedent, which I was like talking to my friend about, there's a historical precedent of rappers sharing beats, you know, five niggas gonna make the same song to see who can make it best you know even when we start talking about that type of thing in rap we start getting into different territory of you know well like biggie did the song 50 did the song lil kim did the song nikki did the song you know the same song because we want to see like who could spit the best on the song that's like a whole different type of getting into like rap hip-hop culture but just talking about like doing things that ha that that sound cool and urban and have that vibe not just a not just a a carbon copy of a 90s song but i want to i want to make a 2018 song that's going to make you feel good the way that 1998 song will make you feel good i'm not going to make a complete recreation of the 1998 song but i'm going to try to make something that's going to make you feel the same you know i feel like that is the mindset that nikki has i don't know if i explained that well but I also want to say that Nicki is talking a lot about feeling betrayed on this album. I feel like betrayal was a major theme. Betrayal by people that she trusted. Betrayal, obviously, by romantic partners. Betrayal, obviously, by friends. Um, she doesn't name drop anyone, but betrayal has been a large running theme of this whole Queen era, feeling betrayed by people, this people running this Nikki hate train. And I feel like it's 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 a relevant topic. It makes sense and I understand why she's talking about it. And I'm glad that she's talking about it. Comparing the subject matter of this album to the subject matter of the pink print, which was deeply personal, deeply introspective, talking more about her childhood, talking more about things leading up to her fame, talking more more about her personal relationships, you know. Nikki is obviously in a different place now in terms of feeling betrayed by people that she trusted and I feel like that's a really interesting concept that is explored um, on a lot of these songs so moving on to Chun Sui I really really like this fucking song anything with Sway Lee on it is a hit anything you guys know I fuck with Ray Shremmer like those are my little niggas like I have seen them live like I like all their stuff I think they are way better than the Migos who somehow magically became way bigger, huger artists. But Ray Shremmert is way more talented and they make way better music. And Sway Lee can do a fucking hook. Anything Sway Lee touches turns to gold. I do like these um, more mature artists like Nicki showing that they can still do music in the current style of what is hot. I like it a lot. Uh, fucking, you know, like I can do this mumble rap style i could do this and uh 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 but then i could still do my shit i could still spit over the beat and nikki has flow like nikki has a flow she knows how to write a beat she knows how to rap fast she knows how to rap slow she knows how to do do what's hot right now she knows how to do her own thing like like y'all faves can do the current style but your faves cannot spit 
somebody like Nikki can do the current style and she could spit. Like, like again, like artists like Nikki, artists like Jay Z. We saw it on four four four. I'm in the up uh, with your bitch. Y'all know killers. I know killer, huh? You know, like fucking J Cole did the shit. You know, like like on their they on their why not both? You know, they're on their why not both shit, which I like. These people actually have real fucking talent, and they're showing you like. Nah, I, I, I'm still, like, I, I'm still on top for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And I fuck with it. I respect it. LLC. Bars. 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 Hard-ass beat. Sick-ass flow. Nikki has delivery. 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 It, it makes people furious. They hate it. They hate it. I, and, and something that I want to say about Nikki also... I feel like Nikki has delivery like a man, almost. Maybe that's like a weird thing to say, but I feel like Nikki almost has delivery like a man. And I feel like a lot of people's issues with Nikki are sexist and ageist. Future? How old is Future? Who is 35? Let me see. How old is Future? I'm about to look it up right now. How old is Future? How old is Future? Nevadius. 34. He will be 35 in November. 34. Future, who is 34, going on 35. Future could come out with these exact same songs. These exact same songs as Nicki. Same exact flow, same exact bars, same exact delivery, same exact beats, everything, and people would love them. Drake could come out with these exact same songs, these exact same flows, these exact same bars and delivery, and people would love them. Women would love them because women love Drake. Like, Nikki has this delivery. She's very aggressive. She's very confident. Like, she's, like, like again, like, she's almost masculine with it. Like, how Beyonce kind of gives off this, like, feminine, this almost, like, divine feminine energy in a lot of ways. I feel like Nikki gives off, like, a very masculine energy. And, again, I feel like if, if, if Nikki were a man doing doing this people would love it they would lose their minds over it but a lot of of what people say about nikki i really do think is ageist and sexist they don't like it because of her age and because she's a woman and i also think that a lot of people are extremely hypocritical when they talk about what she's doing in her subject matter because i'm going to bring up the pink print yet again which had very mature because people say like nikki's not mature she's not mature she's not mature number one jay-z was like 38 years old, still talk about, like, big pimping, okay? Big pimping, spend and cheese. I mean, maybe not 38, like, maybe I'm exaggerating, but, like, Jay-Z didn't get with Beyonce until he was 32 years old, like, to give you some perspective, you know? Like, 03 Bonnie and Clyde, Jay-Z was, like, 33, okay? Like, Jay-Z just matured his subject matter, like, last year at, like, 45 years old or something like that. Like, no one tells male artists they need to change, they need to mature their sound, they need to mature their content. When are they going to settle down? When are they going to do this? When are they going to do that? Nobody says that to them. And if a male artist were making these exact same songs, nobody would say that. Nobody. Drake has made the same album three albums in a row, right? Like, and people eat that shit up like fucking hotcakes. They love it. They doing kiki challenges on the plane and shit like that. So I just find it really, really interesting to watch a lot of the things that they say about Nicki Minaj because I really do feel like Nicki Minaj gives off this more masculine type of energy. And I think it bothers people. Like whatever, whatever her delivery, her flow, like I think it really does bother people. That's really what I genuinely think. Like that's really what I, I genuinely fucking feel that way. Like, that's just how I feel. So LLC, I liked a lot. Um, fucking Nip Tuck, I liked a lot. Nip Tuck is classic pop rap Nikki. It's more singing, which I like. I've always liked Nikki singing. Nip Tuck sounds like probably the most personal song on, on this album to me. Uh, Nip Tuck almost sounds like it could have been on the pink print, which again was a deeply personal album that people did not like. Nip Tuck is just Nikki's lane, like her made up lane, like this blend of rap, pop, singing, R&B, introspection, you know, that is Nikki's lane, the pills and potions type of lane, you know, like there was some there, I think this is another song that's about Meek Mill, there's some stuff about like, you know, we were both tripping, I need to come off my pedestal, you know, I, I enjoyed it, I fucked with it, come see about me, 
more of like Nicki's lane, this pop rap lane. I've also said before in other videos that Nicki Minaj likes pop. She likes pop music. People have a problem with her liking pop music. What is wrong with Nicki liking pop music? Like, why can't she like pop? Why can't she rap and also like pop? People always, I feel like people always trying to put Nicki in this box. People are always trying to put Nicki in this box. I did a video previously uh, when Nicki had came out with, with something. I don't even remember what it was now, but she had came out with something. I think maybe it was like a single title or something like that. Uh, not title, uh, artwork. And she had like this Trinidadian uh, like headpiece on. And people were like, ah, oh, that's not her fucking culture. And da 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 I was like, well, number one, like, she's West Indian. Like, it is her culture. Like, she's Trinidadian. And number two, and it was like a pop song. And people were like, and this is like pop garbage. I was like, and number two, like, why can't Nicki do pop? Like, why do y'all keep trying to put this woman in a box? And y'all are still doing it. Just the, the parameters of the box have changed with what you expect her to do. If Nicki wants to be fucking 48 years old still doing the fucking Barbie shit, still, st like, who the, like, who cares, sort of? Like, Future is going to be 45 still talking about, Future going to be 75 still talking about coding crazy in a wheelchair and people are still going to love it and nobody is going to question it, you know, like, and I think Nicki does good pop. I feel like Come See About Me is a great pop song. Fucking Sir with, with fucking Future. I really also like Nicki is showing how she could do different things. She could do pop. She could do R&B. She could do, again, trendy stuff. She can do the, the, old, the old sounding stuff. She can do, she, she's very clever with a lot of the wordplay in Sir. Pretty gang, Sir. Pretty gangster. Call me AI, Sir. I'm the answer. Everybody knows I love Iverson. I say that shit all the time, like, the answer. Like, practice? Practice. Talk about practice. Like, Sir, Nikki's in her bag. Fucking Miami, Nikki's in her bag. Like the flow is cold. Like the flow is too cold. Like the it's a very good hook. Nobody's touching Nikki's flow. Nobody's touching her presence on a record. No one. I'm sorry. I don't care. Every feature on here, and there's some solid features on here. Like Future has a lot of presence on a record. Nikki can stand toe to toe with Future. I feel like. People try to like downplay that shit. I really like the little interjection with the dude talking. I have no idea who he is. I didn't look it up. I'm sure y'all gonna know who it is. But again, it sounds like some some kind of like grimy, some street New York shit, which is funny because it's called fucking Miami. But I like that song. Coco. Some more kind of West Indian. There's a lot of West Indian influence. There's a lot of West Indian, Caribbean via New York vibe on here, which yet again, every time Nikki does anything Caribbean influence, People come out the woodworks because they think she's a black American, a.k.a. a descendant of American chattel slavery, trying to take that shit away from her, showing what they think about us. But you know, we're not going to get into that in this video. We already we already off that. We already passed that. Coco I really liked. Foxy Brown is on this one, which is really, really amazing to hear. Fucking Inga. She sounds really, really good. Her flow sounds solid. Her voice sounds amazing. Sounds just like, you know, the Foxy that you know and love. And again, Nikki understands inspiration versus recreation. Nikki understands paying homage truly versus copying versus biting. Like, Nikki didn't just use Foxy Brown's flow. She put Foxy on the song, right? Like, Nikki didn't just fucking like she understands inspiration she understands I want to give you the feeling she understands I want to give you the essence I'm not just gonna you know brick by brick I'm, I, I'm I'm trying to make you feel something like Nikki understands art she's an artist I'm sorry like Nikki really I feel like she really has an understanding of art and the way that's like trying to get people to feel certain things not just oh I hear this song and it reminds me of an old song ooh, but like I feel it like it gives me that old feeling even if the sound if even if the song itself doesn't necessarily sound old I have that old feeling I hear the old inspiration in the beat obviously there's a clear fucking West Indian inspiration in the beat but the song doesn't sound old you get what I'm saying? And I, I've always felt like Nikki was really a master at that. She's a pro at that. She understands how to walk that line. There's a nice grimy production on that one. I really like Coco a lot. It's a strong ender. 
and then it ends with her inspirations outro which is a lot of like West Indian influences and inspiration and something that's been going around a lot recently that I also want to like drop in this video because I feel like it's relevant is the origins of hip-hop you niggas watched the get down once and I think you know everything about hip-hop I did a video on the get down where I said that shit was revision revisionist history directed and written by Baz Luhrmann who has a fucking hard-on for fucking romanticizing poverty and poverty porn if you haven't seen that video please go look it up but the influ the background of fucking hip-hop is that it came from fucking three sources, okay? Which was Jamaican fucking turntabling, which was a thing. British, aka London, mixing and sampling of records. And then the American rapping and talking over the beats. Those were the three main influences of hip-hop combined with the fact that it was birthed here in America, in the United States. It was birthed out of the, uh, what do I want to call it, the street conditions here in the United States, in New York, in the Bronx specifically. It's a... Uh, because I see a lot of people saying, like, well, that's, it's not a fucking black American art form. Like, no, it is a black American art form. Like, let's stop with the games. Or if we're going to say that it's not, we could even say that, like, even if you want to start talking about, like, the West Indian influence, for example, like, reggae. Reggae was created by people that were fucking inspired by old black American blues records, old black American disco records, like, old black American rock records. The earliest reggae albums were fucking samples and renditions of black American music. So can I now say that reggae is not a West Indian art form, it's a black American art form? I would never even think to do that. And the fact that people are trying to like reverse do that on us with hip hop, it's gross, it's disgusting. And it's just another example of what we've been talking about, which is people trying to fucking take everything away from us because they don't respect us. And then I feel like we deserve to have anything, but we're off that. So let's move on to the bad. That was the good. There was a lot of good. I enjoyed a lot of the tracks on this album, obviously. The bad. This album is way too long. I've already been talking for 20 minutes. I think my ideal album length is 12 tracks. This album has, what, 19? 18 or 19 tracks? It's funny because I saw a headline of an article that I did not read, but I saw the headline after I already had my notes written down for this review, and the headline said something like Queen. It said, like, Queen is a 10-track masterpiece inside of an 18-track album. It was something like that. And I feel the same way. I counted, and I like 10 songs exactly. In my good portion, I named 10 songs. This album is way too long. Like, eight or nine tracks could have been cut completely. Like, completely. However, I don't hate any of the songs on this album. I don't hate any of the songs on this album. I don't think any of the songs on this album are bad. There is some stuff that I personally, like, don't like just in terms of, like, my own personal tastes. Um, like, Ganja Burns does nothing for me personally. Again, like, more West Indian influence, more of a reminder that Nikki is Trini. That's the opener. I know for a lot of people that's going to be, like, a solid opener. Um, there's like rich sex, like, eh, it's not a bad song, whatever. I, Wayne is still my guy, whatever, you know, hard white, whatever, whatever, you know, bed. I have no idea why she likes Ariana Grande so much. She keeps doing songs with her. I, I don't, whatever. Good form, which sounds like a Drake song. It's like a fake bounce type thing that I didn't really care for, but like, it's not a bad song and I don't hate it. I don't know why Nicki Minaj is doing like fake bounce tracks yet again it sounds like a Drake cast off which I personally don't like but I'm sure there's going to be people that like that song you know like there's there's songs that but none of the songs are bad none of the songs make you think like oh I hate this song it's just a lot of them and there are songs that are personally not to my taste and I feel like and I'm just going to like kind of get into my wrap up because I don't think there's any ugly on this album like I said there's not a song on here that I hate I even like like the bed song is like fine and I do hate it, Ariana Grande, you know. But the thing about this album being so long is I feel like Nicki tried to give a little something for every type of Nicki fan on this album. Like she tried to give something for the mixtape Nicki fans. I feel like that's what Barbie Dreams is. She tried to give something, you know, for the pop rap Nicki fans, the R&B Nicki fans. She tried to give something for the street fans with songs like LLC and Miami and Sir. She tried to give something for the shit talk fans. She tried to give something for the cool kids, you know, with, you know, Sway Lee and stuff like that. She tried to do a little something for everybody and that just made it way too long. And I'm not going to say that the songs that I don't really care for are filler songs because I know there's probably going to be people out there that love some of those fucking songs because those are the songs 
that's the version of Nicki that they like. Uh, but just for me personally, I feel like the second half of the album is stronger than the first half by far. Like, by far, like by a lot. <laughs> I really like the second half of this album. But again, there's just there's too many songs, and I also feel like the songs are somewhat in the wrong order. Like, for example, why I feel like Sir should be after Chun Sui. Like, why is Sir... And, Every time I listen to Chun Sui, I skip and listen to Sir, and then I go back, you know? So stuff like that. I would rearrange the order, and I would cut a lot of shit out. I'm most likely going to make a playlist of the songs that I like in the order that I want, which is something that I used to do all the time with albums that I liked. People have also been requesting playlists, so maybe I'll start doing some playlists for you guys, uh, music playlists. But overall, I think this is a solid album, very good production, amazing flows, great wordplay, a little bit of something for everybody in terms of content. Um, again, people hated the pink print, which I love. The pink print is my favorite Nicki album. Again, it's extremely personal. It's extremely introspective. There's a lot of the, the pop rap on there, the R&B rap, and people didn't like it. Um, Queen does not top pink print for me personally as a complete body of work, but... I do think there are some songs on Queen that are better than some of the songs on the pink, a lot of the songs on the pink print. I just like the pink print better as like a, a, as like a complete body of work because the queen, queen is just too long and it just has too many songs. But Queen is good. It's very solid. Like, again, I'm just going to have to make my own version of it and like get rid of the eight tracks, the eight tracks that I feel like are extra. But again, even those eight tracks, I don't hate. And there's no Drake on here. Which actually makes it a step up from the pink print because Drake is on only on the pink print and I love that song but I hate Drake and I hate Drake's part. So I feel like this album is good. Like I think this album is good. It's solid. Like and I know people are gonna like but I, I do feel like if you're not a Nicki Minaj fan this might be a, either a love it or hate it type of work but I like it. I fuck with it. So I enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I've been listening to it. Like, I fuck with it. So, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Anything you want to add? Um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video, Queen. And that's it. Super thumbs always. See you guys next time. Peace.